thing has got some serious weight to it. What's up everyone, Cool Caparoon here. Thank you for stopping by for yet another video. I appreciate you being here. I thought this would be a cool idea. A what's in your rack 2020 edition. So I've had another one of these Cappy VP28 Platinums for a year or so now, and I have this weird thing that I need a pair of everything. And so finally picked up the second one, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you guys what's in my racks and what exactly I use each piece for. However, I'm out of room in my 500 series chassis, so this one's not going in quite yet. Oh, if you guys haven't subscribed yet, I'd love it if you would subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Hit the subscribe tab and the bell icon next to it and give me a thumbs up on this video and drop me a comment. Let me know what your favorite piece of outboard gear is and check out some of the other videos. Tons of cool stuff. Here we go. So the first piece of gear in this rack is a Furman power conditioner, nothing special about it. Supplies power to the rest of the rack and supplies some filtering for the AC power that comes in. Makes everything a little cleaner sounding, takes care of a couple issues. Next in line is gonna be the Universal Audio Apollo 16 Mark II Blackface Edition. These sound great. It sounds better than my old uh, 192 HD interfaces. There's no preamps in this one because I have outboard preamps, but it's 16 channels and so it's perfect for mixing hybrid and using outboard gear while mixing. Below that is the Cappy 500 series chassis. It's an 11 slot chassis and this chassis comes as a kit that you can put together yourself. So the first two slots in this 500 series chassis I have a pair of Cappy Hyder mic preamps. I do record guitars and acoustic guitar and vocals through these but they also live on my mix bus so when I'm mixing they're on my mix bus and all the the whole mix passes through these preamps for added color. They have a kind of an aggressive mid-range and they have a really deep low sub bass and so I love them for that. Next in line is the Serpent SB4001 bus compressor. This is modeled off of the old SSL compressor out of the 4K console. I did an enormous compressor shootout, uh, which if you dig way back through my Instagram, by the way, hit me up on Instagram, at Cole Caparoon. If you dig way back through my Instagram, uh, there is a bunch of posts of me shooting out compressor after compressor after compressor, some of the greatest, most famous compressors in history, and I settled on this one. I absolutely love it. It gives the snare just a wonderful crack. This compressor also lives on my mix bus. On the mix bus, it hits the Cappy Hyders first, and then the Hyders drive this Serpent bus compressor. It sounds absolutely lovely. It's on literally every single mix that I do. Next in line after that is my first original Cappy VP28 Platinum. This These sound amazing. They really do. The DI sounds fantastic on bass. It sounds awesome on keys. Uh, they have a little bit smoother of a mid-range than the Hyder, and the low end seems to hit just a tiny bit higher than the than the Hyders. The Hyders feel like they hit like 50 or 60 hertz a little bit, and these feel like they hit like 80 or 90 hertz. Uh, and so for a, just a different application, they sound absolutely wonderful. Now that I have two, I'm super pumped to try them on my mix bus and see how that sounds. So I track vocals through this preamp, I track acoustic guitar through this preamp, bass, electric guitar, I mean, just about everything. Also, while mixing, I run the vocal back out through this preamp, and that is the first uh, piece of hardware in my hardware vocal chain when I'm mixing, but we'll get to more on the vocal chain in a minute. Next in line after that is the Cappy LC40. This EQ and the LC25, which I'm gonna talk about in a second, sounds absolutely amazing. Just passing audio through it without adjusting any of the EQ points makes the audio sound better and thicker and have more depth. It's absolutely wonderful. Next in line after that is the Cappy FC526 compressor. And this is like a Swiss Army knife compressor. In my opinion, it's every bit as versatile as, say, a Distressor. It has a wonderful sound. It's not terribly colorful and characteristic, but it's also definitely not a transparent compressor. So what this means for me is it sounds great on a lot of different things. Uh, it operates exactly like an 1176. However, the sound characteristic is much more vintage API uh, than 1176. So 1176 style controls, vintage API sound, can't say enough good things about it. 
So the LC40 and the first Cappy FC526 are my kick chain. I run my kick drum out through these two units when I'm mixing, and that sounds wonderful to me. Next in line is the Cappy LC25 EQ. Same as the LC40, just passing audio through it sounds fantastic. It's just different EQ points than the LC40. And this is my snare EQ. Now the reason why I use the LC40 on kick drum and the LC25 on the snare drum is because I really like 100 and 200 hertz on a snare drum. That's one of my favorite frequencies to boost to get lots of thud and thump out of a snare drum. And so the LC25 fits the bill for the snare drum. The LC40 has 40 and 80 hertz on it, which I love both of those frequencies on kick drum. And so that is my deciding factor why I have one of each and exactly why I chose them. Next in line after that is another Cappy FC 526 compressor. This is my snare compressor. So the LC 25 EQ and the FC 526 compressor is my snare chain when I'm mixing. Next in line is a Cappy BT 50 EQ. Now this is based on a vintage API 550 and this EQ sounds monstrous. It, I've used the API EQs, vintage ones and new ones many times and, and I really genuinely like this EQ better than the API stuff that I've used. It's wonderful sounding. So this is my vocal chain and when I'm mixing I come out of the interface and it first hits the VP28 Platinum preamp. Gives it a little bit more color, a little bit of a high pass. From there the vocal goes to the BT50 EQ where I touch it with some sweet beautiful frequencies. And then from the BT50 goes to another FC526 compressor and that is my vocal chain when I'm mixing. Now at this point, I'm guessing you're watching this video going, good lord, couldn't you have chosen a few different things? Do you really need all this Cappy stuff? And first of all, I wanna say that Cappy is not paying me to make this video. This is truly, genuinely just what's in my rack. No, this stuff sounds awesome. It's super affordable. It's kind of a secret weapon here in Nashville. Almost all the big dudes here in town are using it. Not only incredible bang for the buck, but it stands up against some of the best gear ever made. Next in line is my TubeTech LCA2B stereo compressor. It is a very new design and it is an absolutely wonderful sounding compressor. I chose this compressor originally to handle my drum bus and it is absolutely fantastic at a drum bus or at a parallel drum bus. What I didn't realize when I first picked it up is that it would become my single favorite vocal compressor ever of all the ones I've used. I, yes, I like it better than the TubeTech CL1B. Yes, I like it better than a Distressor. Yes, I, li I like it better than anything else I've ever used for tracking vocals. And so this compressor handles parallel drum buses when I'm mixing, vocals when I'm tracking, sometimes bass when I'm tracking as well. And it is absolutely fantastic sounding. Next below that is an Aphex 109. I've literally never plugged it in. It's taking up rack space. Next after that is an Audiologic Quad Gate. I've literally never plugged it in. It's taking up spare rack space. Next is an Alto 6 channel headphone power amp. And I do use this whenever I have more than two people needing headphones simultaneously. Next after that is an ART or ART, however you want to say it, XLR patch bay. Now this is nothing special. I didn't feel the need to spend high dollars on this sort of thing. It's just to pass signal through from the front of the rack to the back of the rack. So when I'm setting microphones up in here, I don't have to climb behind the rack to plug anything in. This XLR patch bay is then tied to the actual patch bay in the other rack, which we are going to go over shortly. In the rack on my left, you will see another Furman power conditioner, same model, cleans the power up a little bit. Next after that is a pair of Coil Audio CA70S tube mic pre's. These are absolutely stunning on acoustic guitar and they are stunning on electric guitars. And if you're looking for a very colorful, uh, more vintage sounding vocal, they're wonderful on that. I have heard of many people using them on their mix bus. However, they have a little bit too much color for me personally on the mix bus, but I literally can't say enough good things about those mic pre's. Next after that is a PV two channel compressor. It's called a CEL2A. This compressor used to be in my live rig when I used to mix front of house. I've just never sold it because it has a really great DSing quality. It's one of the better live compressors that I've used, affordable compressors. Occasionally I will run bass guitar through it or acoustic guitar through it when I'm mixing in here. 
It's too neat of a compressor to sell. However, I don't use it much, so sometimes it gets used. Mostly it's just taking up rack space. Next after that is a rack blank that I've put a sheet of paper over and taped down and drawn a grid out. And this is how I mark all my patch points for my patch bay. It's bigger, it's easier to read, it's much more convenient and uh, easy to read than putting the actual markers in the patch bay themselves, which a lot of people do. Next after that is a Behringer patch bay. Yes, I have some Behringer gear. You can spend an absolute ton of money on patch bays and the money that I didn't really have. So I just got a cheap patch bay. I don't notice any degradation in sound quality. When I first got it, I bypassed the patch bay and went through the patch bay to see if I could hear any difference in sound. And I personally cannot, so I'm not worried about it. That is my patch bay that runs the entire studio. After that is another AudioLogic quad gate that has never been turned on. It's taking up rack space. Below that, is my Hoffler DH220. It's a power amp that runs my NS10s. I get asked constantly what power amp I'm using for my NS10s, and it's a Hoffler DH220. Old power amp, sounds great, it's been perfectly reliable, all good. And that is what's in my racks. Thank you guys so much for joining me and hanging out. I appreciate you stopping by. Again, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon next to the subscribe. Hit me up on Instagram at Cold Caparoon. Hit up my website, coldcaparoon.com. There'll be links in the description below for all of this. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.